Okay, good morning, and today we are going to be swapping out the carburetor from this Tecumseh Enduro OHH55 engine. Uh, this is something I did a video on a while back. And It wouldn't just, it wouldn't run or keep running. I don't know if the float bowl is something's wrong with it or whatever, but uh, I put it back on a shelf and I'm only now getting to it. I do have another carburetor that I from the other engine that I cleaned off and put a new primer bulb on because this one, th these are like hard as a rock. And I think this one's working fine. So I'm just going to swap it out. And then I'll open this thing up and see if I can figure out what size is it, or what's wrong with it. Uh, the, <laughs> the other weird thing is, is I was trying to find the wrenches for this thing, and it's very strange. They seem to be 3 eighths, but they're not really three eighths and I don't know it's, it's just bizarre it can't it's not a nine millimeter it's not a ten millimeter it's too big for a for a ten millimeter uh, I'm sorry it's, yeah and a, a nine a nine millimeter is too small. A three eighths is too big. So I'm not really sure what. That's going to be fun to put back on there because. See if we can get a hold of that. no clamp on the fuel line, but there's a clamp on this breather hose. So go figure. I'm kind of irritated with uh, these Tecumseh engines or a lot of the modern stuff. This thing has no um, you can't adjust it. You can adjust the idle speed, but that's about it. There's no uh, No adjustment on the carburetor itself. Oh. I need to make a little mark so I don't, I don't forget the 
this came, this went in there. This engine's from, I think it's 1985, or maybe 89, I'd have to look again. So, not surprising that some of the stuff, the lines on it are maybe a little petrified. Okay, maybe that is the fuel line. Yeah, that's the fuel line. Sounds like there's gas in it. Let me get something to drain that out into. this open. This is one confusing engine. I think it's not metric, which is a surprise. Yeah, damn thing's not metric. Well, there's definitely some kind of fuel in here. It's leaking all over the place. Let me move this to a, a vise where I can get a grip on it. Okay. So we got it up here on the vise so I can get a good grip on this and unloosen it. And where are we? Zoom out a little bit on this. That's better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's the reason why. That's why this thing wasn't working. Totally gunked up. So let's leave that right there. Alright, so I'm just gonna put a new or a, a cleaned up carburetor on it and then I'll have to get this thing out on my test bench and see if it uh, starts up and runs and stays running so stand by a second okay so with all the gas fumes in here now I had to open up the door so apologize for all the noise and whatever you might hear. Alright, let's uh, get a bolt in here just to hold this in place.
Ashley. Okay. Stand by. this Actually tight. Right. Okay, now the test is so we're going to put some gas in it and see if it leaks. Let me get my can down here to catch it if it does. All right, let's see what happens here. A little bit more in. That's it for a second. Now while I'm waiting, let's tighten these screws. I'm not seeing any leaks. Well, let's get the uh, air filter on this thing and we'll get her out to the test bench and see if she uh, If she starts up. Okay, so there's, like I said, there's no adjustment on this carburetor at all. So it should either work or it won't. Uh, the only adjustment is the idle. And we're going to kind of set that by ear and then I'll see what it measures out to be.
I need a Torx bit. All right, we got the right screwdriver now. I'm gonna have to figure out how to set this governor. Okay, so I've kind of figured out what's going on here. Uh, come to find out that I thought the governor wasn't adjusted properly, but what's going on is the spring on the throttle is not, is broken, and it's not holding it in the low idle position. I've tried fixing it, and it'll sometimes go to low idle, Sometimes not. What I'm going to have to do is uh, have to fix that other carburetor and put it back on because the spring is fine on it. So uh, that'll have to be for another day. Okay, so from the last scene about a week has passed I have ordered a replacement carburetor and you might wonder why I ordered a replacement carburetor uh, well I tried to I looked into ordering um, a carburetor kit which is really just this gasket and this gasket not much more and it was twelve dollars that was the cheapest one I could find on eBay. I actually didn't look anywhere else, but anyways. Uh, for $9.95, you can get an entire stinking carburetor, which I find you know absolutely ridiculous. But even if, say, I use this carburetor and I find out it junk, I can use the parts the gaskets and stuff on this carburetor so either way I win um, so for $9.95 shipped from California I got a, a whole carburetor it's nuts um, before I go and put it on the machine let's take a look at the difference between these carburetors uh, this one is a Tecumseh carburetor and this one is a Chinesium knockoff and I don't know if you can see it but it looks like this one got a bit of abuse I'm gonna guess that what they did was they just they knocked these out you know by the the dozen and then they get tossed into a pile after they're machined and rolled around 
because uh, I don't know if you can see the, the scratches and dings on this one. The machine, the surface looked like it was nicely machined, but uh, that was before it got dragged through a parking lot. Um, so some interesting weird dichotomies that I noticed. Uh, this is a a cast piece of aluminum it looks like. Now these are both I think cast aluminum but what's interesting is this looks like it's probably steel. Let's see. Yep, it's steel for, uh, for this, but this is brass. Uh, the throttle seems to be fine. The springs look very similar. The, the valve, uh, this one's held on with a Torx screw and this one's just a Phillips screw. has a hole in it, but that's covered up by the, the shaft. Um, I have a feeling that in some cases uh, there's an application where you rotate that around so that the hole is exposed. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to take this off. Um, I I don't think this is probably the right uh, design for this, but uh, my experience with this one was it really didn't need to be primed. It seemed to work pretty good without it. Um, initially, I wasn't going to open the float bowl up, but I'm I went to do that and I found out it wasn't even tight, so. Have to do that. So we've got these two, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call them jets. Um, they look almost identical. If anything, I would say this one has a slightly larger hole. This one seems to have a larger hole. This is the idle jet, if I remember correctly. Um, float bowl. These look, look, look identical. But uh, here we've got a brass. Let me zoom out a little bit. A brass float in this one, and in this one we have a plastic float. But once again, this is, this is, there's a weird the the differences. Um, this one has a plastic jet, and this one has brass. Interesting. I'm not going to take this this part up anymore apart. Hmm. Well, anyways, uh, so I'm going to put this thing back together and put it on, replace the one on the engine, and we'll give this thing a try. And if it doesn't work, I can always take these pieces off because I've already cleaned this one. This is the one that was originally on. Um, I can always clean this, use these pieces over here hopefully. So uh, I'm not going to film that because I already filmed it once and uh, we'll get it out on the test stand and uh, see if it adjusts better. Okay so one of the things I had to do was try and look up how the governor was set up on this thing because I think someone had messed with it. And I'll go over that in a little bit if it works with the way I've got it set up. So, let's give this a go.
Okay, I'm going to get this back on the bench and we're going to go over that uh, governor settings. Okay, so there's going to be some fan noise in this video. Get over it. Um, I'm going to go over this governor as I understand it should be connected. Uh, the Tecumseh Technician's Handbook is uh, not clear on this model. doesn't even show this model even though it says it's for this model. Uh, also the gimbals in my Steadicam aren't what they used to be so you know sorry. Alright so this is basically your governor and the way this thing apparently should be set up is that what you do is you loosen this screw here tight move this shaft until it's fully counterclockwise now this is this engine only how this works once you've got this uh, fully counterclockwise you take this lever and move it until the throttle is all the way over and that's your full throttle then you tighten down this screw uh, if your engine doesn't return to idle and you run your set screw out and you have to pull this back that means that this spring in here is busted or not connected correctly so I would check that also on mine there are two holes on this and mine is on the there's two holes an inside one and an outside one mine is on the outside uh, I don't know if that's correct but it seems to be working there is no high-speed th uh, throttle adjustment there's just an idle and as you saw in the video uh, basically you want to adjust it so that when you come off of full throttle the engine doesn't quit so you want to compromise um, I think the idle on this is supposed to be around 1750 but uh, with the fixed idle jets in this thing or the fixed jets it's kind of difficult to uh, to get this thing to behave properly so basically bump your throttle your idle up until you uh, it doesn't quit when you take it off a of full throttle uh, the other thing is I noticed that what I found is you want to put this in my case it was the third hole and I based that off of when I pulled the throttle all the way to full it engaged the throttle fully when it was down here it did not and it was here it did not so at this point on the third one when it was full throttle over here it was full throttle over here the other thing is uh, somebody had this stuff monkeyed with get rid of this air filter so I can see what I'm talking about all right they had this hooked like that and that is not correct this hook is supposed to be free floating it should do that it, this throttle engages that hook when it's at full throttle I, I would think you would want a more controllable throttle with this but apparently on a go-kart you you have stop and go so whatever uh, and then you were supposed to adjust this by taking this bow out or increasing it in order to 
get your full throttle to be uh, only when it was or actually the idle if the idle doesn't return that's another thing you could adjust I think that's what it was look for uh, uh, Tecumseh technicians uh, manual I think it was called so anyways uh, I'm calling this good it works uh, and uh, that's it for this video later